drives up. Reverse layup. Oh, what a play for Randy Potter. With the left hand. I think Greetings, everyone. Dan Webster with MN Sports reporting on the 2009 City of Lakes Lopet race day coverage from the urban paradise of Nordic skiing, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Theater Worth Park Chalet Stadium once again sets the scene for this Super Sunday Jewel event. Sarah Morse, Caitlin Compton, Jan Gunther, Kate Ellis, and Mary Beth Tuttle make their presence known amongst this year's women's racing elite. Meanwhile, Zach Simons and Jim Bischoff join the likes of Bjorn Bettdorf, Matt Weir, Chip Tabor, and Andy Shekel for the men's elite. This year, the city of Lakes Lopet took place amidst the most glorious of weather conditions. Start time temperatures for the racers was a sun-drenched 34 degrees as the cannon roared. A well-groomed course by the dedicated Lopet staff would give these Nordic skiers a fast track to work with and enjoy. At the start, making their way up Stadium Hill, we see many hopefuls vying to be crowned King of the Hill. Notables up front looking to establish an early race lead and the moral victory of claiming the hill are Matt Weir of Marquette, Michigan, Zach Simons of Park City, Utah, and the proud new father, Chad Giese of Minneapolis. As the elite reach the top of Stadium Hill, resuming their V2 strides, it's Matt Weir taking the honors. On the outside track, staking a claim for second was Travis Hink of Plymouth, Minnesota. Third place on the stadium climb went to Chad Giese. Newly added this year to the Lopet race course is a return visit by the skiers after their first kilometer of work. Skiers reaching as fast as 40 miles per hour come screaming down Stadium Hill, then have to make a sprints cut sharp left around teardrop turn. Zach Simons makes the turn first, followed by Anders Ostus of Duluth, Matt Weir, Chad Giese, and Bjorn Batdorf of Duluth making up the front five. As these freestylers once again departed the masses and headed back into the woods, they got to ski through a new cutout canopy, personally designed by the City of Lake Lopet Executive Director, John Munger. <laughs> Appearing first off the 8-kilometer Worth Park Bridge is Simons. Zach, at this point, has about a 30-yard lead on the others in the front five group. However, you'll find soon it only takes a few strides by Weir and the others to remind this Utah native that the leash won't be a long one on this racing day. As for the women, Caitlin Compton comes zooming by in the lead. At Creek Bridge near Garden Park, a lead change has occurred as Matt Weir is first into this hard left turn. Simons, Ostus, fellow Duluthian, Nikolai Anakin, Batdorf, and Giese join at the 12K mark. Entering onto Worth Lake, 14 kilometers into this event, this front group of now six skiers finally gets a long, flat straightaway to work with. The 28-year-old Weir from Michigan's Upper Peninsula took second place the week before in the 51-kilometer freestyle event of the Nokamanon. As these boys stride against a 15-mile-an-hour headwind, Weir turns the lead wind-blocking duties over to Simons. This is a standard practice for the pack, as those able to keep up are often able to draft off another, so as long as each understands the gentleman's courtesy being bestowed onto them. As for the women on this day, there would be no drafting for nor by the 28-year-old Caitlin Compton of Minneapolis. At this point, we had learned Compton was ahead of her competition by a full four minutes, and this after sustaining a short fall in the first kilometer of the race. However, it was eminently clear that the newly crowned United States National Cross-Country Skiing Champion was not going to be deterred nor phased by any such mishap. 
Today was a day the woman who spent her early childhood on the streets of New York City was going to use as a continuing testament toward her training and excellence for the World Championships in Liberic, Czech Republic later in the month. Coming down the trails at Eloise Butler Park, roughly 18 kilometers into the event, Compton nabs some hydration, then sets forth and actually attacks this particular downhill. Caitlin says she is comfortable attacking downhills due to her alpine experiences in Vermont during her formative years. Back to the men. At this point, they have reached the channel between Cedar Lake and Lake of the Isles. With just over 5 kilometers to go in this 32.4 kilometer race, we find the earlier six-pack has now become the Three Amigos. Ostis, who placed third the week before at the 51K Classic event of the Noki, had the lead, but knew he needed help from teammate Nikolai Anakin. Sandwiched between the Duluthians was none other than the prospective heir apparent, Bjorn Batdorf. On to the Uptown Mall we go in the final 200 meters of this splendid race. Now it is just Ostus and Batdorf in a sprint for the Lopet title. Both of them reaching deep down for whatever is left in the tank. And here, folks, here, amidst the snow sculptures and the crowd, it's Batdorf, the Thunderkin, they call the animal, the predominant heavens to Betsy on skis, all grown up now and taking control. That's right, folks, your boy, Bjorn Batdorf, is the 2009 City of Lakes Lopet champion. I see like the, the, the beginning pack kind of took turns drafting and, and whatnot with each other. Um, when did you start feeling as if now's my time to take this race? Oh, I, I didn't even think about it until until the straightaway there at the end. Uh, for a while, right when we got to the lakes, I got gapped a little bit and there's two guys in front of me. I had to spend most of my time uh, trying to catch up to them on the lakes. And then I finally caught up with them with maybe 2K to go. How does it feel to be the City of Lakes champ? It feels great. <laughs> For the women, making her way up the Uptown Mall, the woman who was talked into cross-country skiing as a sophomore in high school, taking it to heart while attending and graduating from Northern Michigan University, preparing for greatness while skiing the CXC circuit, and now residing in Minneapolis and mentoring our youth. The Minnesota nice gal with a big apple smile, Caitlin Compton is your 2009 Lopa champion. How does it feel to take the Congratulations, Caitlin. Uh, it's awesome. Caitlin Thompson is crack. the name you're going to be hearing awesome. an awful lot of in the next What was today's style of race for you? You had a lot of the hills in the early going, then the lakes in the later going. <laughs> Just what was it like? Uh, today was the longest race I've done in a number of years. So I have to say I was a little nervous. I wanted to make sure I had enough energy to finish it. But I think I did a great job. I skied, you know, hard but smart in the start uh, and through the hilly sections of the course. And then I made sure I fed. I had, you know, good uh, goo packets and Gatorade. And then I just felt so good towards the end that it worked Number out perfectly. 10, 25, did last night, did that sprint Jay and all the tight turns sort of help you in the early going where there's a lot of tight turns? Right, 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 right. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, that's definitely one of the best parts about this course in particular is how technical it is. There's never any spots in the woods, especially, where you can relax and wait because it's just constantly transition and transition and turn up and down. It's just, it's actually one of the more fun courses I've ever seen.